Hey guys, RC here with another RC Reacts. Leeds United played the early game in the Premier League this week, traveling to Aston Villa. And as you can see, we walked away with a 3-0 victory thanks to a Patrick Bamford hat trick. I uh, don't think anybody saw that coming, but you can see we pretty much dominated the game. 60% uh, possession, 82% passing accuracy, 27 shots on goal, 9 on target. Uh, it was nil-nil at the half uh, and fair play. Um, Bamford had a missed header that was you know, a, a good opportunity. Uh, he also had a, uh, a ball that he was coming across the goal and he was past the far post. And he could only take it with his right foot. He, you know, he was in full stride, and I don't think there was any way for him to get a left foot on it to send it back across goal. So, you know, that was a rough chance. Rodrigo had a big chance uh, early on, and then he had another chance off a set piece just outside the box that he sent over. Pablo Hernandez came on off the bench, and he had a wide open opportunity, and he skied it, and I couldn't believe that one. Uh, Bamford's goals, uh, the first one was a Rodrigo shot. Rodrigo took the shot from the left side of the box. Really hard shot, low and away to the back post. Keeper made a good save on it, uh, but couldn't, couldn't handle it and, uh, you know, deflected it. And Bamford was sitting on the back post, uh, was able to get in and get a touch on the ball and just slot it home. Right place, right time, good positioning for that rebound. And then the, the second goal... And the third goal were very similar. He took he took entry passes into the box, and uh, he had defenders around him, but nobody wanted to close down in the penalty box, and so they were just around him. And he was able to do basically one touch, open his body up, and square up on the goal, and then uh, you know take a shot with the ball. Uh, first one he threaded a needle with. It was a brilliant goal. Uh, the one in the 67th minute, definitely take a look at that one if you can. And uh, put it in the top bin, top right corner. A uh, beautiful goal. And then the uh, third one, similar similar situation. He got an entry pass from uh, Helder Costa and um, uh, who was his, um, Jamie Shackleton. Uh, they did a one-two back to uh, back to Costa. Costa gave the entry pass into Bamford, and Bamford again in a crowd uh, was able to open his hips and then place it to the back post. You know, two really good goals there. He ends up man of the match. Three goals, six goals in six games for Bamford, and uh, we looked really good in this one. Of course, Villa's first loss of the season. Um. You know, they were unbeaten, four wins in four, and they were going for top of the table. So we can take a look at the table. Everton's still up at top with 13 points. Villa on 12. Leeds now up into third position uh, with 10 points. They have played an extra game, but they jumped from 10th to third position. How crazy is that, seeing Leeds United that high up the Premier League table? That is crazy. Uh, I tell you what, Jack Harrison was dominant on the left wing today. He gave Aston Villa all kind of problems. I think the one thing for Harrison, if he would be more more direct, he's he's got a he's got maybe the best first touch I have ever seen ever. Um, he can stop a ball on a dime and, but when he, when he takes the ball, it, it seems to me, typically he takes, he tries to do too much with the ball because he's so good at the, at his ball control. He always tries to take that one extra touch and more often than not, it fails him. And he ends up losing the ball, getting tackled, ha having the ball knocked out of play or something, you know what I mean? But he's a very exciting player for us, and I just wish maybe he would be a little more aggressive with getting that ball in into play, into the box, instead of trying to pick what looks to be the perfect ball. Um, Helder Costa, he has so much pace, and yet the Aston Villa defender on that side... I saw him outrun Costa 
at least twice today, and that was mind-boggling. I couldn't believe that. Um, our newest player, Rafinha, who we signed, the Brazilian uh, midfielder in the offseason. Well, he's, he's a midfielder winger. Uh, he looks class and a half. Um, he looked so dangerous. He made some brilliant plays with the ball. I think he is going to be a huge player for us. Rodrigo has really shown, you know, he's coming along leaps and bounds. And it's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, you know, here we have Bamford, you know, six goals in six matches. Previously, one goal in 27 Premier League appearances. But as he said in the in the post-match uh, comments today, he said, you know, I was coming off for, you know, two minutes here, five minutes there, ten minutes here. You know, so he doesn't really count those. You know, they're not full matches. So, but he he's stepping up and, he, you know, but I saw Rodrigo, a couple of good moves on the ball. I'm seeing a lot better movement from him on the attack, uh, really starting to fit in with the with the uh, driving, pressing motions that, uh, that Bielsa wants. In fact, early in the second half, you know, they, they, you know, they had a panned out view of the leads on the attack. And I was wondering if Bamford had dropped more back into that number 10 slot where Rodrigo was playing because Rodrigo was up high and I'm starting to see a really good partnership with them moving in and out with each other. But, um, you know, Rodrigo uh, Bamford had his hat trick. When Rodrigo kind of said, "You know, we had a we had that set piece I mentioned earlier, and Rodrigo was adamant he was going to take it. Everybody else backed off. Um, kudos to him for for wanting the ball. And you know, Bamford, you know, didn't need a fourth, I suppose. And I don't think Bamford's our best set piece taker. Uh, so it was, you know, I was ex- interested to see Rodrigo kind of pull that senior leadership card." uh and and demand the ball uh and then he skied it i was like eh. and then we had a great opportunity that i talked about earlier pablo got a drop pass uh right ar- just between the spot and the edge of the box right in the middle and uh i think he hit it from a step too far back and he had to kind of you know lean back to get his foot on it and it just went sailing you know sky high over the bar uh it could have easily been five or six nil. Uh, Jack Grealish, uh, we'll talk about him a little bit. Um, he had a really great opportunity in the first half. Uh, there was a cross ball. Uh, Ailing went after a ball all the way to the right sideline. Uh, got beaten. I think it was Ollie Watkins, possibly. Uh, Watkins brought it into the box and then played it across. To, uh, you know, low low cross and Grealish took it beyond the far post and uh, played it back in. And I thought it was going in. Luke Ailing, to his credit, recovered, never gave up on the play, and at a full sprint came all the way from the right touch line, possibly out of play, all the way back to the to the goal line. And when the ball beat Meslier for the for the goal. Uh, Ailing was there on the touchline to deflect it and send it, send it out and save a goal. And uh, Grealish was uh, adamant that it went in. VAR and, and the goal line technology uh, confirmed that uh, Ailing had saved it. You know, I do not like Jack Grealish. Uh, I call him Jack Greasiness just because I think he's scum. I will say, he is a very, very talented player. If he was just a better person, I could respect his game and I could respect him. And I do respect his game. He's very talented, very skilled. But I've watched him for several years now, going back to the championship playing Leeds. And I don't watch him outside of playing Leeds, but all I see him do is complain and piss and moan. That's all I see him do. And, you know, he's always diving. 
He's always looking for fouls and penalties, and he did it again today. There was there was basically a, a no touch situation, and he collapsed like somebody had shot him with a shotgun, uh, and he was down on the ground screaming in pain. And I'm like, what a putz! Um, I even tweeted him, and I don't usually do that, but he's such an idiot player that I can't enjoy the skill that he has. And if that's how he wants to play, then more power to him, I guess. But I I get no enjoyment out of watching that. And, you know, and, and all of his stupidity overshadows the positive things that he can do on the pitch. To me, to me. You know, typical leads first half, we, we pressed, we dominated, we had them on their back foot. Most of the first half, about the last 20 minutes, they tightened up. They started getting some some attacking runs on us. I was a little concerned after the Wolves match because we came out really stagnant in the second half against Wolves. And in this one, we didn't. We came out firing again, uh, pressing forward. Uh, Even in the, you know, it was like the 94th minute. Uh, 95 minutes of, you know, there were five minutes of stoppage time. And in the 94th minute, we had a, we had an attack open up and we had six players uh, bombing forward, uh, including Alioski from left back. This was even more impressive to me because Calvin Phillips got hurt against Wolves, which was a cheap ass foul, by the way. Um, and he's going to be out potentially six weeks. So not happy about that. Um, but, you know, him being out, uh, Pascal Stroik, who uh, has been a very solid player since the return to, to football last, you know, at, you know, last the end of last season in the championship. Um, he has played really well. Uh, he is filled in at center back uh, twice already this season. And I think that's kind of his natural position. Well, he had to move up to Calvin's uh, defensive mid, holding midfield slot. Uh, He was carded uh, once early in the match in the first 20 minutes. They were really pressing him hard. He created a couple of fouls that were, you know, after the yellow that you were kind of like, oh, man, you know, and, and I think Bielsa was just really concerned that he was going to be sent off. He's, he is young. I think he's only 21. So, um, you know, he got subbed off at the 20-minute mark. Uh, they moved uh, Mateus Click uh, from his attacking mid position back to that holding mid and, um, and then brought on uh, another player, uh, farther up, uh, Jamie Shackleton. So uh, that was interesting to see him go to Shaq's. I was kind of wondering if he might not go to Rafinha earlier because I want to see him play. I mean, just the snippets. We've we've seen him now twice for, you know, 10 10 minutes last match against Wolves, you know, 12, 15 minutes today. And I want to see him more. He looks so explosive and smooth and dangerous. I just want to see more of him and see what that does to open us up. So a uh, huge win for Leeds United. Uh, at the beginning of the season, when I was kind of looking at the schedule, this was a game that I kind of had penciled in as a win. But in full honesty, with the form that Aston Villa had been in leading up to this game, I thought a draw would be a positive. And then after Wolves, when we you know we knew Calvin was going to be out um, for this game and the next few games, I I was really thinking that this could be um, this could be another loss that we could drop points here again. So uh, to come out and and play solid defense with a rotated defense, and then having the early card forcing an early sub on a player that is already rotated in and then bringing in somebody farther down the uh, the bench. I think we did a great job, great job defensively. You know, we took our chances, especially in the second half. You know, we, we, we got some shots, uh, finally got them on target. I want to say 
two shots on target in the first half, so seven shots on target in the second half, and put three of those home. So the big thing is, is just getting our shots on target. You know, we're definitely taking our chances. We're seeing high number of shots, and you can certainly see uh, – if we take a look down here, I mean, we've got 12 goals in six matches, so we're doing really well. Granted, we've allowed nine. I mean, Liverpool's allowed 13. Seven of those were to Aston Villa. But, you know, we're seeing a lot of really upheaval this year with, uh, you know, no fans, no noise in the stadiums, I think a limited off season. All of that's coming into play, and we're seeing a, a lot of, things going on that I don't think we would normally expect. Glad to see that, though, way down here. Uh, <laughs> hopefully that uh, that keeps going. We'd like to see them maybe finish uh, down in the bottom three. That would be awesome. But uh, anyway, great game for Leeds. Who do we have next? So it looks like we do have a layoff uh, for the rest of October. Next match is scheduled for Monday... Another Monday match. Monday, November 2nd, and that'll be against Leicester City. Uh, fifth in the table, back-to-back uh, -back defeats after three wins on the bounce to start the season. You know, and one last thing, I think Wolves, and I mentioned it last week, the Wolves match kind of gave a blueprint on how to try to beat Leeds. Leeds is going to push and press and attack and attack and never stop. And it doesn't matter if they're up 3-0 or if they're down 3-0. They're going to continue to attack. They're not going to set up shop. They're not going to park the bus. They're not going to play more defensive. They're going to attack up until the final whistle. The one thing that Wolves did was they parked the bus early and soaked up a lot of that attack. And then they got the goal on a counter. And then once they got the goal, you know, then we have to open up even more which then opens us up defensively. So, you know, hopefully nobody else does that. That's That was my hope coming into the Premier League was that, you know, most of these teams would be aggressive and attack-oriented. But we'll have to see. We'll have to see how that pans out over the season. But I think most of these clubs in the upper half are going to be attack-oriented. Um, but still, we, you know... As was noted on the post-game match on uh, Peacock on NBC today, you know, Liverpool, Leeds still had they don't have thirty and forty million dollar players. You know, we've got a couple of twenty to thirty million dollar players that we signed this year, or you know, one twenty to thirty and a couple of you know ten to twenty million dollar players. But most of these guys were middle of the table championship three years ago prior to Beals' arrival and he has stepped them up with the training and they have bought in 110 percent and it's reflected in their play and as a Leeds fan we love him and we love the players for it and uh, we're looking forward to a good season six matches in 38 on the season correct and we already have 10 points, so we're 25% of the way to that magic 40-point number. And that's all we're hoping for right now is just stay up. And um, so just stay up. Keep it up, guys. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you thought about the game in the comments, and we will see you after uh, the next match. Don't forget that's not till November 2nd against Leicester. Take care. Bye.